Okay, this is my thing for today. Yeah, so that's why. Um, we did a little bit last week. I don't know if we got anywhere, but this is a whole new um, mahalach, or maybe not a new mahalach, but a new mahashir. And it has to do with this story. Everyone, I'm starting with this story that everyone knows, and then we can go back and forth. But the vast of it that everyone knows is something that Rabbi Echanan said, and some guy named Rabbi Krispe Doi, or in their shalom is called Krispa, I don't know, uh, repeated in the name of Rabbi Echanan, who was a great scholar and imaginary figure. Imaginary meaning had a good imagination. Besides for being a balalacha, a big wala good Rabbi Echanan. It was You have to know. And just like we, we learn, uh, we learn chesedish um, for them. Everyone thinks they're all the same, and then you start understanding that they're different. So in the Tanan Vamirim also, you think like Chazal, not just Rabbi Kiva, Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Echna. So Rabbi Echna was one of the great ones. Anyways, and Rabbi Echna. Everyone thinks Rabbi was not one of the great. Ones. Rabbi Kiva was definitely one of the great ones. What? It says <laughs> No, for uncertainty, yeah, everyone had their mikdash. Exactly. Rabbi Echnon was one of the ones that for sure is mentioned a lot in Agudah. That's how, and, and the Agudah is, is serious. I don't know if there's any there are Stam Tayralech. Anyway, so in his name, it was, it was told over by Rabbi Echnon, and there's a whole context to this that I'm about what Sadiqim had a Shoma that I'm not going to get into. But I want to focus on one, only one little part. He said that there's three books open on Shoshana. One for Tzadikim, of Tzadikim, for Tzadikim, unclear. One of the Shoem, and the third one for Bainanim, and the Bainanim are, are the ones that Im Kippur is for. That's the Shtikl Torah that Rabbi Echanan came up with. It, before him, it's a big Chiddush, it's a huge Chiddush, we think that it's simple, but even in the like, theology of Tzadik and Bainim Rishoyim, it's a very big Chiddush. I think that the concept of Bainani was invented by Chazal, or maybe the Rabbi Echanan even, but there's some sources before, earlier sources, that have this three part division, because if you read the Torah, you only know about two kinds of people. There's Tzadikim and there's Rishoyim. Tzadikim Everything works out good for them, and Hashem, Gai and Red. But where do this third category of people come? This is a very big Chiddush of Chazal, and if you'll read the Psukim that he tries to bring proof text for this, it doesn't say anything about Bainim, it's all like Api Medrash. So that's one of the, I think that's the very big Chiddush, and I think that that has to do with, I mean, it, it only makes sense. There's, there's other reasons for it, but it only makes sense. Like, you have this, especially when you ha- want to have this, like, uh, Ideal of Schar Vaynesh, or we talk about Din of Rosh Hashanah, or maybe it's thinking more in general about Rechna speaking specifically about Rosh Hashanah. Um, then that one of the unrealistic things is when you think that there's only Tzadikim and Hashem in the world. And there's basically no Tzadikim and Hashem. That's basically what this Mamet is saying, because he's trying to get you to buy any. Because if you think about it, like for the Dir Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur in the Torah, and the, the Yom Kippur is not relevant for the Tzadikim or for the Rosh those three people, they don't have to fast Yom Kippur, I don't know. <laughs> but there's not really any such people. Everyone else, like it says, everyone basically, So Benoni is just normal people. Like a tzaddik is someone that's, even if it's Rav well, how many people are tzaddik? Eh, three of them. How many people are the Shon? Also very few. Most people are not. They're not sure yet what they are. <laughs> that's the basic concept. That's why we have all these, that's why everything has to do with the Benoni. So that's one big Kiddush that Rebbe Echanan came up with. And there's even a machloikis in, in some other sources in, in the Mesechtes Evil something. There's two Mesechtes Evil, Mesechtes Machlis, it's called. Um, and one of them brings a machloikis to about this. Are there two books or three books or only one? So this was Rebbe Echnan's written, it's a big Kiddush. It's like Tzadik and Misham and Bernim, and you're the Bernani, and that's who we're talking about. And you're Nish Kan Tzadik, Nish Karush, and Ara Bernani. Very important. Like we have all these like, uh, things. Like, should you think of yourself as a Tzadik? Should you think of yourself as a Rosh? No, you should just think of a Bernani. Not the Tanya's man, and he just like, man, seriously. <laughs> if I want, I'll be a tzaddik. If I don't want, I'll be a rasha. That's, that's what the deal is about. Okay. That's one, one shtick. But now the thing that I'm focusing on, so that's like one whole sheet, and one year, like two, well, some time ago, we discussed at length the whole thing of how this chavon is supposed to work, and there are the tzaddikim, and the shoim, and this whole thing, the whole Ramban, and Taisfus, and Shon, and Sham. Then there's another thing, another whole sheet that we did, which has to do with the question of time. Right, because the shlesh is firm in the tochen b'rash hashana, and that's also machlekes tanum if you think about it. But and there's maybe four shittas in tanum already, like if there's the rash hashana or every day or every week or every year or four times a year or all kinds of different configurations. Everyone figure out their own, and we have a basic uh, philosophical or theological problem that this doesn't make any sense. Right, because God is beyond time. So, like, if you say that people get. Okay, we live in time, but like this whole idea of a din happening, 
one day of the year, he's sitting down, and like I found here, someone, Rabbi Yitz, Yosef Ibn something, uh, Yosef Ibn Sadik was a Jew in Spain, a little older than the Rambam, and he wrote a little book called Olam Katan, Small World, or Microcosm. And in his book, he has this like whole long rant about people that are like, yeah, God, if, if he didn't look up in his book, he, can, if he might have forgotten what you did, so he has to check in his book. And you know, if it was yesterday, it's not the right time. You're like, it doesn't make any sense. So we had a whole bunch of classes about that. That's another thing that we're not talking about. So <laughs> this year, I'm talking about a third thing, which connects to what I was talking about uh, the past two months and other classes, which is about these books. So it's all, it's all parts, of, if you think about it, they're all parts of the same question, but like they'll go back to the same kind of questions, but it's just focusing in on a different aspect of it, which is these books, like what are these books all about? Why do we need three, well, like why three and two and what each of them's function is, that's another question, but what is this, well, probably obviously a metaphor, but what is this thing of books happening? Why does God need to read the books and does he write the books? Are these books something that, like Rasha says, these books are things that you that are written. Sefer Hazachonis shall shall mass of an elder. It's like the Sefer Shal Sadikim is every it, what was written down all year. What you did, but then there seems to be another book where he writes down what's going to happen with you. Uh, that's what it seems to say also in the uh, Zanatoyke, right? So there's a book that you signed yourself, and then the uh, Chosev. Then is another thing, or maybe it's on the side of that book he writes what's I don't know how <laughs> how it's supposed to work <laughs> the story, but that's a story. Okay. So what can I ask? So I don't know what normal people think. They think that there's books. Yes. You got all these it's emotional, but what's the name shall? So as I so firstly, um, yeah, we'll say the first thing is like this. The first thing is my first page. And the first Kiddush, the first uh, that helps gonna help us is to realize that Rabbi Yechon didn't make anything up. Well, he made up the part of the Batabainanim. I think that that was his main Kiddush. But the part about the books he didn't make up at all. In other words, this language, at least, right? Whatever it means. This language he did not make up. The language was made up at least by Moshe Rabbeinu already. It's already in the Chumash. He quotes the Ebring the Pusik. It's not that I'm saying that it's in the Pusik, but it's true. It's not like that part is not a Madrash. It's true. At least it's a possibility of Pshat, and in Sefet it's for sure, clearly. Right? So the, the, the Gemara in, in, in Avdir and Hashanah brings two sources for this, for this Torah. One is from Tehillim, and one is from Pashas Kisisa. And above it, it's page two. Above it said it's a pushak and sefer telem, which is a clear, actually a clear, like if you're thinking of something talking about a sefer achaim, actually that's also a language that we have in the Siddha, sefer achaim, which is the sefer shav sadikim, the sadikim, the chtovim lechaim, right? Uh, he quotes a pushak and telem samachtes. This is Tuvada Melech cursing his enemies, let them not have a good day in their life, and so on. And it says, Yimuchim a sefer chaim, vim tzadikim alik a sefer. So before the drash, this is what it says. There's a book of life, and he's giving these people a punishment or a curse or a tefillah that should happen, that they should be mektos, deleted from the book of life. And it goes on with the metaphor, right? They should be deleted from the book of life and not be written with the tzaddikim. So this is very clearly the book of life, where the tzaddikim are written in, and these bad guys should not be written there. Pusik, mefirish. So at least we know that this language of speaking about books was not invented by Rabbi Echlan or anyone in his day. It was invented a long time before. Shait. And Rabbi Nachman Yitzchak quoted an even earlier source. If you look in the other places, you might see... Um, yeah, this apparently this is Rabbi Nachman Yitzchak's source, but it's also a good source, which is even earlier. From Moshe Rabbani, Moshe Rabbani in, in, in one of his tefillahs for the Chetam uh, Chet Egel, says, Look, it's, it's, I even gave you the whole story in like, page 4. It says like this, Moshe came and said, Shloyim, they did a big problem, big Chet, and now listen, you have two choices, either you Moshe them, or delete me from your book. It's implied. Delete me from the book that you have written. That's what Moshe says. And then the Abishta answers Moshe, it's according to the same uh, language. He says, why would I do that? In other words, the Pshat, and I think everyone is more that this is what's going on. Moshe is saying, you know, these people have sinned, I didn't sin, so I'm, I'm gonna take it on, I'm, like, either you're Moshe them, that's my, my job, and if not, take it out on me. Like, 
delete me instead of deleting them. And Rebbe says, no, I'll delete them. Why would I delete you? I didn't do anything wrong. Basically, that's the Masa Yamatan. Uh, back and forth between Hashem and Moshe. But actually, yeah, whatever that part is about, like how could, is it true that Moshe could take it instead of the Eden or not? How, however, however that part is supposed to work, we have them both using this language or the same language of there being a book. And Moshe is saying, delete me from your book. And I'm not going to delete you from the book. I'll delete me as So this is like even a general principle. Whoever is Chayotah gets deleted from God's book. So God's got a book where if you're good, you're in it. And if you're not, you're not in it. You delete it. As I start the post, second bar's kiss is uh, okay. So, one interesting thing, and you can notice already here, by relevant to what I said before about the pen and the show him, is that there's here there's only one book, right? Also in Tehillim, if you think about it, there's only one book, right? There's a book. If you delete it from it, there's no other book where you get written into, right? It's not like the Gemara has at least two books. Even before the Bayanani, they seem to have two books, right? One is Shiflon Sefer Shtel Tzadikim. Second book is for the Rishoim, who will die, right? And the third one is for the people that are Nishtahir and Nishtahin. But in the Pesach, you don't actually need, it's much more uh, economical, right? If there's just a negative, you don't need two books. You just take the guy out of the book. It makes much more sense. For some reason, the Gemara thought you need a second book. I'm not actually sure that this is true, because I was thinking about this, and I asked this last week in my class in Barry Park. And I'm not sure about it, because if you read the, actually the, the, the Medrash of the Gemara, it says... I'm um, going back. It says the matter goes like this. If you not both of them, both of them work like this. That um, at least, uh, yeah, both of them work in the same way. Both of them, both of the medrashim and the psukim that have that find three books in them somehow work by calling the deletion a book. Right? It says the Rebbe says Ma'akra Yimochim Mesef Chaim. It says Yimochim Mesef Zesef Shalom Shalishoim. Chaim is a sefer and tzadikim, and then goes on to find a third one for the Bani. And Rav Nachmitzik said the same thing. Mecheni no is a sefer and shol deshoim. Misivrich is a sefer and tzadikim. So I'm not sure if he maybe he just like clarifying this negative part of being deleted because he doesn't say otherwise. How does it work? It's like the, the being deleted. That's what happens to a rasha, and the misivrich is what, hap- so what happens to a tzadik. And there's another book where you get written lack, down. Uh, negative is the lack. The pusik is for sure the lack of, of the book. Right. And then the Gemara, I don't know, but at least the Gemara did understand the pusik like me still, that the Russia is the one that gets deleted from the book. And maybe they decided that that must be a book in itself. I'm not sure about that. Well, it depends really what it means, this book, that this whole thing. Okay, so I'll tell you what's the Nafkamina from this. Nafkamina is a zone. Nafkamina is that, what's this, what does it mean? Now, now we have to ask every touch. What does it mean, this, what does it mean, delete me from your book? Like, what book? Again, in the Tehillim, okay, you could, yeah, it says Sefer Chaim, so there's the word life. We understand that means die or something. But in, maybe. But in the Chumash, it doesn't mean, there's no context. Like, there seems to be like an expression that everyone understood, right? Uh, delete me from the book. Everyone knows what it means. Hashem knew what it means. Moshe knew what it means. They didn't, they didn't explain what it means. And there's, there's a lot of expressions like this. It's not a weird thing. There can be expressions that need to be, you need to have the context of what this idiom means. Now, I, I think, and at, least the, at least the most basic thing that it definitely means or at least, mm, not everyone agrees that this is the basic pshat, but it seems to be the basic pshat, the Rajbam and the Ben Ezra, both quote a different person, where Moshe seems to be playing the same game, which is in Pasha Shlach, by the Miragle, and he's doing the same thing. He's, Moshe is always trying to, we spoke about this, right? He always talks to, to, talks to God with the chitzpah, not chitzpah, but Oshayana Aziz and Moshe, that's the Medrash, you know? Oshayana Aziz and Moshe. He doesn't even bargain. It just gives him the, the conditions, and then God has to bargain with him. And he's trying to force God, like he has his different ways of forcing him. One of the ways is to say that, uh, me, but the passage for you, the mitzvah, I'm going to say that you're a loser, you know, mm-hmm. you got to, that's what it says. You can't, yeah. Uh, it says twice, that's, it says three times it's filled in, this, this idea. I mean, we, we use it also, is basically based on this idea, but we say it more nicely, I just said it like, came ahead, that newspapers are going to write about you, and the other that's one thing he does and the second thing he does and also in twice and both places where there's a long story about how Moshe got God to do what he wants or at least closer to that and both of them seem to be like built on the same idea with a lot of different stories is in Pasha Shlach by the Meraglim and actually this is not by the Meraglim this is somewhere else this is by the Malaysia. and Moshe says you want me to do the this is by the by the Misoinim right I'm confusing something it's by somewhere else 
He says, kill me. I don't, rather, just kill me. And this is like, this is a threat. Like, since you don't want to kill me, so you got to need to do what I want. What I want you to do, right? Ep says, I, there were three, there were three, there, it's also in the Medrash, there were three, there were three Nevi'im that asked God to kill them. Very suicidal thing to, to be a Nevi. And Elio. I hear me also. Right. But not in that, this, see? Yermi was crying, like just uh, it's the same, I should have not been born. But Elio said, I'm not better than Moshe, like he wanted to die. It's for the same reason, like. And Elioi, Elioi, by the, when he came to Archerev, and he says, the Eden, listen, this is not working, and delete me, I'm getting told. I'm not, wor- I'm, he says, I'm not better than my forefathers. Like, what does it mean? They're all dead. I might, as, might as well be dead too. That's the push shot. But I'm saying it means also like, look, Moshe did this. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> He's doing a repeat. A lot of the Leon of his story are like, uh, are mirroring. Yeah, mirroring Moshe's thing. Anyways, this is his thing. He says, kill me. So we see in the other place, it says clearly kill me. And here he's pick, maybe it's like, well, it was a nicer way of saying, don't say kill me. Re- cut me out of your book. Uh, just another way of saying kill me. And like we see clearly later that the Ebesh Dad says, no, I'm not going to do that, but I will do it to whoever I should leave. And the next person is Vigav Hashem Esa'am. So I'll kill someone else. I'm not killing you, I'll kill the other people that are actually Chayta. So it seems like most push it, pshat, push it in the sense of, uh, without adding in any fancy concepts, is that this is an idiom that means kill me. Delete me from your book. It's interesting correspondence because first God says I'm going to kill everyone. You know, yeah, has to do with the whole thing. And then it's like, right, it's and then Moshe God tries to be the, the only the, you'll kill only the innocent one. I like that, like crazy. Okay, you know what, we'll do it the normal way. We'll just kill the people. Like, yeah, it's all that's such negotiation. A, negotiation, yeah. Uh, seems to have to do with that. Like, uh, these are no standard negotiation tactics. Like, he wants everything, he wants everything, so we meet in the middle. Man, it makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, so the kids, I think the Bajdab shot is this, that it's an idiom for saying, kill me. Or, and I think we could compare it to other places, like uh, 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 right? Uh, what does it mean? What does deleted someone's name mean? Basically the same idea, it means killing him, right? Well, you could say if his whole family is killed, so that's like Mamash deleting his name because it's still some family, like by the Yibam, there's there's still, your name is not only you, it's your family and so on, but it's still real people, it's not a name. What? Yeah, there's a lot of language of deleting people's names. Zechra's name is Zechra, but Zechra doesn't mean people shouldn't remember him. It means, like by Amalek, Rasha says, kill even the animals, like everything that belongs to him, everything part of him. Uh, yeah, and there's other, there's other psikim, uh, no? What did I say in Pashin Tzivim? It says, Hashem, 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 uh, and other places where it says things like this. So Hashem, 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 is big matri, Hashem, you know. No, but the point is, it's like, what is the book? It's, there's, there's like a book, it's a, it's a metaphorical language for being in the book, like, now I'm cursing you out of my book. People even speak like this sometimes. The that's, that's, that's the most push the pshat of this thing is that it's like it's just a way of saying killing you, writing you in the book of death. It's like it's just a fancy way of saying the same thing, or maybe a nicer way, like they let, you, let me from your book. Oh. That, that's the I think that's the most simple, most minimal, most minimal pshat I could think of, or that other people have thought of is something like this. And this, I think that that would be the most minimal pshat in Rabbi Echanan's language, where it's like, Rabbi Echanan is a little more fancy, because it already has these three things, where there's like a, that makes it like some kind of actual book step, where you can't entirely explain it like this. Although I think the Rambam would want to entirely explain it like this, if we ever get to that. But that uh, uh, seems to me the most simple thing. And like a book is like a way, in, um, I could even give you another, okay, this is step one, step one pshat number one, the most pushed pshat. And uh, the Ben Ashbam and the Ben Ezra say that pshat over here in Bar's Kisisa, and that's a very good source for finding out what this book is, because, uh, and I quoted almost all the Mepharsh that I found here, because if you look in the Mepharsh of Bar's Kisisa, you'll find everything that anyone ever said about this Svarim Neftochem, and it's amazing, people that don't read the uh, Mekres Gedolis, they don't know anything, because they don't realize that if you want to know what the pshat of Rosh Hashanah is, you have to learn Bar's Kisisa. I mean, if you just follow the leads, you'll, you'll get there, but people don't do that, and it's very, they speak about it clearly, actually, some Mepharsh, at least, through. Uh, clearly, it made this connection. Uh, there's probably Medrashim I don't see in Medrashim over there that connected. I didn't. Um, I didn't see. I didn't really check. Uh, the Medrash, the Gemara connects it. I mean, the, the Medrash. Rav Nachman Yitzchak connected it. It's not. Uh, I don't think there's any other Medrash over there that does this. But Rav Nachman Yitzchak uh, made this connection. I'm just saying that if you want to know the meaning, so the the Rishonim and, and the Chumash, they're the ones that give you meanings of all these things, and people don't seem to make the connections. And, that's, and then they say that if whatever. Because and then they say if you read Chumash, you're a That's what happens. 
No, it's very nice, because like not in the right place, but if you figure it out, you'll see that it's the right place for a lot of things. Me at Hashem, if I want to write like a radical book, I'll just write a perish on the Chemish. And it's part of the tradition. Like, eh. <laughs> Instead of like doing... Uh, okay, so... Yeah, that's the first chapter. Okay, now I could do a little, still staying in Oil Mazen, like in basic concepts of Oil Mazen, we could do a little more fancy than this and say something like this, and also will be based on different uh, language that we have in, in different Psyche. We could do something a little more fancy and say something like, um, I just need to know what time is. We could say something like, um, sometimes, uh, Again, taking uh, an image, taking an image from uh, uh, things that happen in this world, not just saying that this is an, an Indian for that, but taking an image from that and saying something like, for example, sometimes if, uh, if the king, and long thinking about like bureaucrat bureaucracy, places where there's a king with a bureaucracy, in, which existed always, but mostly if you like go in the end of Tanakh, and the Persian Empire was the most bureaucratic place to ever exist until that time. And if you read the end of Tanakh, for example, the book of Esther, Megillus Esther, is a parody of bureaucracy, if you ever read it. Uh, it's like everything is written down and we can't change it, but we can make an go to mean it opposite. You know, it's a crazy joke about bureaucracy. Uh, like the king, and we have to call them, and there's Gantz Seifrim, and Devrayim, and Shaklim, and Masses. So, <laughs> over there, there's like a king with a Sefer as It's like the most clear, most elaborate story in Tanakh about that. But we can see it earlier also. By the way, the king didn't know how to read. Achashverj was not literate, you know how you know? He needed someone to read for him. And the guy could tell him whatever he wanted. That's what Chazal have these medrashim. Like he didn't know what it said in the book. There was a guy whose job was to be the writer and the reader. Anyways, um, so this this is like a very basic thing. So now you can have a bureaucracy like a king with which like uh, gives a psak or gives like a judgment like either lechaim or lemavas like he could say or for other things we have a pusik also. By the way, interesting pusik. I think that it only works with this. This is already much earlier. It's in the chumash. Uh, in Parsha Baal it says, an elder the Medad, nobody knows what it means. I mean, there's Torahs, uh, I mean, th we know it, that's what the Mufar Rashi says like this, but uh, even Rashi says this, Pshat, when I'm trying to make it make sense. What does it mean? And they were in the, they were in the, in the Ksuvim. So what it means, seems to mean, is this was like a shorthand way of saying they were chosen. So since Moshe chose 70 people, and we're imagining he chose them. I don't know if, how we know that he wrote it down, but maybe even that doesn't mean that he wrote them down. But it's a language. If you say, like, you're on the list, like, they were on the list. A list is a written down thing, or that, that was how they wrote They said a list. Like, they were on the list. And that's why there's a whole story that there was not Babamachna, and they didn't come, whatever the story was. But just a way of saying, you're on, you're on the list. You're on the Moshe's list. You're on the, you're on the chosen people. Or some people used to say, uh, there's language in Tanakh that says things like this, also in this kind of shorthand, like, uh, like even Daniel, but Daniel is also later, but so even before in Yeshaya, there's things like uh, in Yeshaya in the beginning, there's, you no, know, I brought the Pesach here, I didn't bring the whole Pesach, but it says something like, mm, no, what is Yeshaya? Okay, so whoever was written to life and is going to be stay alive. Okay, that's Mamish talking about, but there's different languages that say it like even shorter, like is Daniel's language. Whoever was written in the book is going to be saved. Which book? It doesn't say which book. Well, the elder made them, maybe he says they want to, that maybe that's their sure told one told to take them off the list. Well, yeah, ah, oh. <laughs> but maybe he, sh he should have said just take them off the list and we don't know, it, but <laughs> this is the problem because we're saying that it doesn't mean just dying. It could be me being on a list for some reason, which again, doesn't have to be, doesn't need to be a literal list. Sometimes there's a literal list and that's where we get the language from. There could be a literal list or there could not be a literal uh, list. But the point is like it's, uh, it's a psak. It's like something or it's someone counted for some purpose or someone put it into some kind of category or something like that. So that's, that's an, at least the source of some, some kind of image like this that we have. And like I told you, it's, I think that's a good source for that. And we could make that work with Moshe even. Or with, so in other words, we could say something like this. And I think this is maybe one of the reasons, that's what uh, someone in my class last week said, that maybe that's how uh, the Medrash got the three books, or the two books, forget about the third, at least the two books because they see it not as something that happens. Like if you say, when Moshe says, kill me, okay, delete me from your book, kill me now, today. But maybe they want to read it as something like, kill me tomorrow. So now just like, put me in this category of the people to be killed or to be saved. 
So that's like a different kind of list. That's already there's already an, an aspect of time, like a delay, a delay in it. And then we need another list for the people that are to be killed also, right? Just like this ksiva lecha and this ksiva lemovas. But that makes sense with this second thing. But in general, there's this imagery of like a king, and there's a pasuk in Daniel, the vatakiyeh meyasev, dina dina. This is also like explicitly about the din, which is the Rosh Hashanah. Definitely comes from this pasuk also. Dina anu. I didn't have to bring all the quotes at length, but it says something like. Dina Yosef, I've Atik Yomen, I saw Atik Yomen sitting on his, on his chair, Atik Yosef, Dina Dina Yosef, he's sitting to, to Ledin, Vesef and Psichen, and the books are open. So again, now there's two kinds of books here, like there's books maybe that have had, there's already a third kind of book, right? There's books that, where he's like reading the records of what happened. And again, Daniel is definitely thinking of a kind of uh, emperor, Persian emperor uh, king. I mean, there's already other Psichem that have, like everyone thinks of God in the way that his king acts, you know? So... He's thinking of something like that, where they have books and writers, and they're making notes or deciding what will happen, and that's a way of saying, a way of saying that. Okay. And Daniel also is giving a, a prophecy of something that will happen, so it's very clearly it needs to be something that like will be written down, so the plan, the plan sh- will be planned, or the plan will happen in some future time. That's the second thing. Um, yeah, that's the second thing, and that, that that's also a simple pshat, like. So it's still just a metaphor, or just either a metaphor for just dying, like the leading from a book means dying, or a metaphor for the concept of there being some kind of psak. Now we don't know psak, what the psak means, or what that would mean in in in, uh, in the nimshal uh, for for Shoshana, But at least that's this kind of concept. Like when and the, the other place in the Gemara where they have the same images in Sechtes Erechen, where it talks about why we don't have halal on Shoshana, it says and v'sifre and psichel nefanav. Two, t- two times in chance that it says this, as far as I know. And that's also, like, this is serious, we have the books open, like, it's Sifrem Psichem, that's from Daniel. So that's, again, like a king kind of image, and a bureaucratic king, especially. Like, if, you're, if you'll realize that, yeah, the... I don't know if there was always like, this kind of bureaucracy. This is certain certain style of doing things. Okay, so now... We can do a little better than this, a little better than this, or a lot better than this. And I'll go like this to a third thing. A little better than this. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip this whole pshat that I mean, the Torah, you heard that last week, I think, that pshat. But I'm going to go more general than this. We could do better than this, and we could say something like this. We could say that, what is a sefer? So we could, we could try, try to take seriously this image. Like, instead of saying this is all images taken from how people work, and they just mean whatever, just mean dying or living. We could try to take the image seriously and, and try to explain what it means for God to have a book and f- to be written in it or to be written in some part of it maybe and, and so on. And this is what many good Jews have done, and starting from in my, in my book, Dral Bag, the Maral then later does this. Um, actually, the, yeah, let's, let's, those are the two people that I know say that this in this most general way. And they think something like this, well, sort of to be, to be killed, that we're going back to the first chapter, but taking it seriously, the image. Saying to, to die is to be written out of God's book, so in other words, to stop to exist. So this is a little complicated, because I'm not sure if you stop to exist when you die, but at least, maybe it means or whatever, whatever, but at least in a simple sense. Um, and now we could say, okay, but why is it called that way? So why first say that's just the language? But some people, someone would say, and Delbach says this, says, okay, so this is a way of saying the world, the universe. So, and it's interesting that it like, focuses Ashikasafta, like that you have written. It's a long, lot of words. And that would, you, someone would say, okay, so to die, to get out of, to stop existing, means is being written out of a book, being deleted out of a book. And that's saying that the universe is God's book. Now, in what sense would, we, would it be his book? Well, in the most basic sense, that he caused it. So just like an author writes a book, and being written into the book is being made by him, and being unwritten is being unmade. In the same way, God make, wrote, wrote the world. Well, that's interesting language, but you could say he caused it, so there's at least that thing. And but to, to, to stop existing is to be deleted from God's book. In other words, from the universe. God's book is the universe. That's good chat. And then you could even say even better. You could say, okay, and then why is the universe called God's book? 
then we start saying things like, okay, maybe there's a even more in this image. Maybe it's not just something caused by God, we say that God, we say Mas Hashem, right? God's action or God's uh, creation, that's just a very general term. But to say God's book is to say um, two things, there are at least two things. One is that it, it says something, or maybe both, it says something. So books are not just things that people make, it's like artifacts. That the world is God's artifact, everyone says for some reason, that, that everyone knows. But that it's God's book that he wrote, that's not everyone's, that seems to be more poetic. But it seems to say, it, you, it seems to say something that besides for just being caused by God, it also points back to God, right? Uh, a book is something which at least reveals something of the thought of the author, or something that he wants you to think, whatever. There's something besides for just, I made it. But it says something, it has a, some kind of message, or you could say, well, it shows on what kind of person made it, or what kind of thought has there been. So there's two things in this, in this like part. One is that the book is, points back, it has more meaning, so that's what meaning means, pointing back to where it comes from. Not, only, not like a rack, with not, ne not necessarily pointing anywhere, although it is, because so it's, so it's that's God's book, but that's what we're saying. And the world it points back, and that it has a intellectual content, something like that. There's letters in it, there's words in there, there's something to be understood. So like if we say, to say that God made the world as God's activity, is just, okay, maybe he made it with no rhyme or reason, with no order, with no intellectual order. But to say it's his book is to say that Kulam is to say that it was created with divine wisdom and that it reflects divine wisdom or that it is divine wisdom, however language you like, but that it says something. And that's why we would call the world his book. There isn't any, but now this is a little interesting because this is a nice language and there is such language in, in, in other places that God's book is the world. There isn't such language in, in, in the no, not an explicit language, it's like Tarash. There isn't any explicit language like this in the tradition, in the Jewish tradition that I know of, besides for people do using things like this, which is interesting, because it seems to make sense to say that God wrote the world as a book. But this image is not. There's a lot of imagery, like we have Atsilis Bri, Atsir Asir, you know, all kinds of, well, Atsilis is not, was made up later, but Bri, Atsir Asir are languages that are biblical languages for God creating the world. And each, each actually have a certain imagery where they come from, we think about them, but not relevant. But none, of, none of them are ksiva, writing or writing a book. There isn't that imagery as far as I can know of. Isn't the, the Sefer Yeah, the Sefer says, of course, the Sefer Yitzira got from here. Oh. Of course. Uh, of course, Sefer Yitzira. But the Sefer Yitzira is, is not a Bible. It was written at least in the times of the Mishnah. Man, <laughs> it's later. It's at the same time as the Bechman coming up. Well, again, even a Bechman. Yeah, and, and so the only place, that's where I was going to get there. The only place where we do have th this language of the world being God's book, or that there's being some way in which seeing the world as God's book, is when people talk about, either when they talk about this, very interesting, either when we talk about this, like Pinkton, this story of, of the Din of Rosh Hashanah, or in general, Scharv Oyanesh, in general, or maybe personally to people, or when people talk about the Torah. The Torah is definitely, obviously, God's book. I mean, the Luchas, that's the closest you can get to something God wrote. It doesn't say anywhere that God wrote the Torah, right? God wrote the Luchas. He said the Torah to Moshe. He didn't write it, he didn't write it right? It's interesting. It doesn't say that he's the author. It's Moshe's book. We call it Moshe's book. We don't call it God's book. I mean, there's a book, there's a place like Sefer Hashem and Yeshaya, but anyways. Well, which part is God giving you? Oh, it's telling it to Yeah, which is different than writing it, or at least. Again, when we say authorship, we usually think of the content, but I'm not sure. Um, but the Luchas were written by God, definitely. right? And, or here, in the Sifra Chashe Kasafta, which might mean the whole world, but in context of him being the Manig or being this, giving Schava Oynesh, or in the context of being Torah. And this is, and if you go back to Madrash, if you go to Safi Yitzira, and places like this, people are very fond of talking of the world as God writing. And in, in Zar and in later in Kabbalim, in this book uh, at length, very much likes the imagery of the world being this Sirtat and Ksiva and all kinds of levels of speaking about the beginning of the world as God writing. And writing always means writing himself, so revealing something of what kind of thing he is or that he is, all of these kinds of things. These are language that you get when you speak about Torah. And this is what leads me to, in the most general sense, talk about what we talked about last week, that I think the Rambam thinks, well, secretly, the secret of the writing the Lichas, which was also given, I mean, this is part of the story. If you, if you know, this whole shtickle of Mechen and Masifrecha is somewhat sandwiched in the middle of the whole story of getting the Lichas and back and forth. There's a lot of the two weeks. Yeah, but this is, I'm just 
connecting, leading you back to there. So if, um, if you think about the world as being writing, that's another way of saying Torah. Torah is thinking of the universe as God writing. And these two senses, one in the sense of leading back to him, and secondly in the sense of giving an, ex an intellectual order. It can be read. That can be read, that can be understood, right? Maybe because it can be said, things that are intel intelligible, the word, right? Logos. Um, yeah. That's, that's where at least this leads to, and that's why, what did I say? Oh, now, now one more thing that we can add here. Now we can add, we can give some content to this book, right? Like Rabbi Yechner gives content to this book, right? In general. And that's why I said that I think that the original Torah, the one Asher Kasavti, that's Asher Kasavti, Asher Kasavti, like Zayda Shava. Very few things say they were like, this the Asher Kasavti, Asher Kasavti, right? Masifrecha Asher Kasavti, it's not, not enough to say Masifrecha. The one you wrote, the one you wrote is actually Masa Bereshis, right? Like the Rambam had a whole shtigal Torah actually to very clearly get to it there. If you'll read the Rambam in, I never wrote that perek, but it's in Chelik Aleph perek, uh, you remember, no? Samach something, okay. Samach Vav. Samach Vav and Samach Zayn. It's in Samach Zayn. Yeah, it's in Samach Chayim, Samach Chay, Samach Vav, something like that. Where he does this whole shtigal Torah where it says, he goes like this. And very interestingly, I noticed David Ezra doing the same shtigal Torah. I'm pretty sure that one of, I mean, the Rambam read David Ezra. Um, uh, the Ramam does, does like amazing, an amazing medrash. People don't know that the Ramam knew how to do medrash too. But he just always was focusing on the point. But the Ramam says a medrash, it says, Lichas uh, Mechtavalehim, Ksivim Bats Belehim. They were written by God's finger. And the Ramam goes, Well, what else was written with God's finger? Or what does it mean to be written with God's finger? Well, there's a Pusik Masyad's by Sech, and tell him, the heavens. The heaven was written with God's finger. But what does it mean? Did God write the heavens? Oh. This is, okay, this doesn't say writing, but this is how you get from writing, from making to writing. Right? Ma'as says, like as if he went with his fingers, with his ten fingers, which are the ten spheres, right? And, and formed, the, formed the heavens. His no, obviously, it just means he did it. It's just a nice way of saying it. It's so in the same way, or he caused it, right? In the same way, when it says, it means the same thing, which doesn't mean said, doesn't even mean, which means, but it's soina, which means uh, with his word, like it says in Bash Sebrejus, which means just by his will. Basically means he caused it. And that's where the Rambam seems to get that the Luchas Masa Elohim just means, or Mechtav Elohim just means they're part of creation, part of Masa Bereshis. Now, is he thinking of those particular Luchas that were found or given in those days? I don't know, but it definitely means that in the broader sense, then Luchas, in other words, what God wrote is the entire universe. And we'll get to some particular parts of it, but the entire universe is what God wrote, and the Torah was actually copied off that. That's another way of saying what the Medrash says. Again, the Ram doesn't go all the way there. But another way of saying what the Medrash says, that Vayetz Le'oma, the famous first Medrash in Barashas Rabbah, which every Mechabal and every speculative uh, Jew loves, where it says that the world comes out of the Torah. Just another way of saying that the thought of the world, or the order, the logical structure, the intellectual structure of the world, which is obviously before the world, at least in an logical sense, right? It's not in time. Everyone knows. al Payam Shana is not time. It means Chachma or whatever. It doesn't mean time. Um, is, is the Torah. In other words, the Torah and the world are the same thing. Just when he's speaking of the world in an intellectual way, understanding the world is the Torah, and the understanding is before the action, as every good Platonist knows. So that's why the Torah, and that's why the Torah is God's book, written. Um, that's why we say that Moshe, Moshe going to Shemaim, right, to, uh, or whatever it says over there, to the mountain, and receiving the Torah is another way of saying going up, the Ramam says going up has two meanings. There's a mountain and it also means uh, theoretical going up, which means thinking about higher things or more prior things, more basic things really. It's also going down. Going up and going down mean the same thing. Uh, um, basic, uh, fundamental. Um, it means uh, thinking about the most basic things which, and understanding them, which is another way of saying receiving the Torah. And then Moshe writing the Torah is just him copying. That's why the Ramam calls him a copyist and not a scribe. He's copying from the world into, and that's what was the Gomedes, that was the whole thing. Okay. Anyways, that's the, in general, the whole Torah being the Sefer. Now, um, I have to add one more important thing. That's, this is, gives us also a content to that. So if you say, now the Ramam says this explicit, is also in that Perik, in Perik Nanhe. There's a lot, there's a lot. This, this book that God wrote is a very big book. Like, you know, the the the, the, the about the Tanya, like, Vizita Rang, like, Tazag, Roy Sigat, Nazak, Lain, Sefer. The Tanya was like, it's like a little book. And uh, the Shlevi, and apparently this is a criticism of the Tanya. The Chabad, they think it's a shvach. Maybe it's also. But there's something like, it says like, how did he put such a great God into such a small book? 
Because the Tanya is like this book that I'm going to explain you God. And I'm like, God doesn't fit into your book. It's bigger than that. But the interesting thing is that this is the Torah. I mean, this thing of putting the big God into a small book, that's what Torah is supposed to mean. That's what the Sefer Chaim is. All these things, all these books are that. I mean, the Tanya is just doing his version of it. Like, every year has to write his own Torah. I mean, it's amazing. Um, and the idea is, it's amazing to write your own Torah, right? doesn't mean to copy Moshe's Torah, seriously. Anyways, um, <laughs> that's not writing, that's copying. Um, the idea is that, what they're saying, oh, so the Rambam's idea is something like this. And this is a very nice idea. Something like this. The, of course, God's world is very big. Well, the Rambam's world was pretty small. It's sort of fit in, but it's still very big. Uh, very large universe. And big also in an intellectual sense. There's all kind of, part, like you could think about a whole, a lot of different structures, a lot of different chachma, a lot of different levels of chachma, a lot of different kinds of chachma, a lot of different knowledge and wisdom. There's enough to know forever. I mean, people are very dumb relatively to how smart the world is, right? Um, so which part should we focus on? This is really a big part of the Torah, a big part of the being a Torah. So what, what should we think about? Like which, in other words, which section of God's books should we read first? Maybe you want to read everything, but which section do we read first? So the Ram says like this, Moshe said, uh, in Berak Nunhei, all these classes are really explaining that Berak. So, anyway, the Ram says, Moshe says, And the Ram reads this pasuk saying one thing, saying, "You need to teach me your ways, in other words, Master Breshes, which are your ways, or Hanugas Hashem, in order to allow me to lead this nation." So, since I'm a leader, in other words, I'm giving the Torah. What, by the way, Moshe's leadership is giving the Torah. It's the same thing, right? Managa Medina Shenovi. The philosopher king. Moshe's leadership is giving us halach, it's giving us the law. That's what his job was. I mean, he did other things. He took Sarah Batsraim and everything, but this is his main thing, that at least that's relevant now, is that. And, and Moshe is saying, Moshe is saying, yes, I know that you've done a lot of things. You've done all these exchanges, a lot of, a lot of stuff to learn. Okay. But now I need to learn. I need to know mainly one thing. Of course, I need to know everything. I need to know everything. But I need to know mainly one thing. I need to know what's relevant, at least the part or the aspect of your creation, of your book, that's relevant to leading people. In other words, what makes people good people, how to make people good people. Which is another way of saying the science, humanities, right? The humanities, remember? The human sciences. The science that are pertain to making people into good people. That's what I need to know. Everything else is nice, and this is connected to everything else. It's not like it's a, just a thing in itself. But that's the main thing. And there's some way in which everything gets included in this because of the microcosm thing and whatever. But the point is, this is what I need to know. And this is really what Rebbe Echanan says, if you think about it. Rebbe Echanan said, God wrote three books. Well, he didn't say that. <laughs> he said the God has three books, but now, after much the Torah, he's saying there's only three books, or three parts of the same book. That's just language, right? In other words, you, could, you want to think about the world, you want to understand, there's a lot of things to understand. But first you have to understand three things. There's Sadiq and Bainim and Hashem. And you make, try to at least move, keep on moving from being a Bainim to, be to being a Tzadik. And this is another way of saying, and, I mean, the Zohar says this, the, the, Sefer, the, the Zohar says it, and it must be even earlier. The, like you said, it's in, in, in Sefer Yitzira that says, I don't know, but it's very possible that it's, uh, he's interpreting the Bechnan. I don't know if it was before or after or whatever. And the Mufarsh definitely say this, but I don't know if it's originally the Pshat. The Zara definitely reads it like this and explicitly talks about the, and even earlier, I mean, the Serbene Bachi over here also, you could see this Pshat. And they say it in the Maral, they all say this thing, which is that there is three parts of the world or three ways, three, in other words, three attributes of God, right? Three in, in Hanugas of God, which are relevant to people. And these are the three exact things. There's life, die, de life death, and this weird thing that we're living which is neither life nor death. We're by them, tlim, by them. Like, we're not sure yet if we're alive or dead. That's what there is. And in other words, if you don't know how God acts, like the Ram says, there's chesed and rach and din. That's the the chesed, the Ram like to say, there's only chesed and rachma in the world. Which in other words, there's only tzaddikim, b'rashayim, and by them. Tzaddikim get pure chesed, b'rashayim get pure din. Both of these things are not relevant. Third people get something in between. And that's also what the Ram says. The Ram says, that the main Midas are just these two Midas called Midas Arachmim and Midas Adin. And he says, out of the Yidgol Midas, there's only one of them that's Midas Adin, which is Poikta Van Eves Albanim. And he says that this is what you have to emulate. You have to do 12 times as much Arachmim as, as Din. But anyways, and he has other things over there. But the point is that there's 12 times as many because there's 13 Midas. And one of them is Midas Adin and 12 of them are Midas are good. Good is another way of more compassionate or patient. What? 
In the beginning, yeah, that's different, yeah. Because the fasting, no, you should fast, but you should fast, you should fast, you should fast. That's why we fast, much of fast for 40 days. Much of fast for 40 days. But the fast in order to be, uh, well, fasting might not mean literally fasting, that's what Shnei Burton told me. It might mean just not folk, when you're, even when you're eating to think. Because it says in Berek Nun Aleph and Chala Gimel, it seems to say that. But uh, the point is that Moshe had to fast, and that's what we fast in Kippur, which is that they, in order to focus on this, you have to have time, or you have to not be distracted by all kinds of other things. The Ramam is very pure fasting. We're not Lashem fasting. The fasting doesn't make you close to God, it's the knowing that makes you close to God. Yeshaya also holds like this, yeah. Definitely. And you're and everyone's the truth, so what can I do? But it doesn't mean you shouldn't fast. Fasting is very useful. It doesn't mean you should be a fresa. Being a fresa is very destructive. Anyways, uh, where am I? So the point is, there's the only these, these three thing, main things. Again, the Rambam might only have two things, but the third thing, okay, whatever. But this is a, the Tzadik and Bainim Rishayim. The Rambam also has the thing with being a Bainani, so must have something with how to deal with that. But the Bainani is really just navigating this mess where we are, which is, again, another whole, I should give a whole thing about maybe, in a I don't know, I should think about this Bainani business, because it's a very great innovation that Chazal figured out. Um, but the point is, that these are the three main things, and that's what we have to learn. That's why there's three svarim. In other words, you could say there's three worlds, or three parts of the world, or three, three things that the world is. And you've got to make sure which one you're in, or learn what these three things are, and, and know how to manage yourself, or to manage others uh, in this way, how to lead. Okay, that's the thing where there being three, and it means the whole world, which is divided into three, like and and Chesed Gvir Teferes, says Nazar. That's that's one shot. Okay. Whose shot is this? I told you. It's Rebbein Bechai and says in the Derech HaKavodah, says that this is the shot and he explicitly quotes the concept of Shlesh Yisvarim. You can see it in Shara Eure, you can see it in Zer, you can see it in the Mepharshim of Sefi Yitzira, and so on. Yeah. Um, I have another shot. You're interested in more pshatim? This is a good shot. It's the true shot. You don't need more pshatim. Hmm? It's a good chat, no? Can I tell you two more? <laughs> what time is it? Two more. One is the Ibn Ezra's chat, which is interesting. Um, Ibn Ezra in, 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 in over here says like, and if you'll read it, he, okay, I'm not gonna go through all these codes, but this is what he says, and Ramban says clearly, that's what he means, and in one of some places, he says this clearly. Ibn Ezra says something like this, and he's working also with the Ramban's chat a lot, or he may, maybe he invented this shuttle that Ezbelihim is the is Shemaim, Nas and Bet's Belihim. And he says he thinks that there has to be a book. So in other words, he's not happy in him and other people in other ways. I'm not happy enough with my general shot of this being the whole world. Because he wants to actually know it. And he thinks that there's ways to know it, or maybe there's levels or sources of where these different uh, books or different activities or different uh, ways that people are led uh, come from and where you can know them. In other words, he wants to have a step, and I'm going to make it very clear. He wants to have a step, and this is also the, in the chat, like I said before, why we need a book. He wants to have a step in between the actuality and God. In other words, the, and this is an important step for many people. Even the Ramam needs such a step, although he denies that there exists really such a step ontologically very, in many different ways. Because you say, okay, very good, everything that happens is God's actions and God's ways of thinking or ways of doing which we formalize into the wisdom, and that's what wisdom is, that's what it is, very nice. But then it's just like saying, like I say, so being deleted from God's book is the same thing as dying, which is very nice. I mean, of course, dying is being a Rosh that's being deleted from the book. But it doesn't give me, like, we have this image of Rosh Hashanah. It doesn't give me, like, a day before where I could think about it. It may be changed my mind. Maybe I could get it to the other side of the book if I have that time. Well, at least I can understand it. We always want this, like, separate thing, this separate level of understanding. Or we want it to be a book besides for there just being the reality, the activity, the action, like, you're dead, you're alive, you're good, you're bad. We want it to be a, a book where it just talks about it. It's just talking about it stage. It seems to be useful for people. And everyone looks for things like this. We want to know the future before it happens, right? Or you want to know to understand things. Like I said, maybe you could use it to change, maybe not, but at least you have this knowledge which is separate. So this is important. So we're looking for like the place where it's like revealed, or the place where there's a way to think about this. That's why we say things like, before I said that the Torah and the world are the same thing, but obviously there's something we call Torah and something called the world. That's why we have Rabbinim that said, uh, and someone must have said it before him, I have to forget who he's plagiarizing, 
but that God wrote a book and then wrote a commentary on the book, right? The first book was Master Parish, and the second book was the Torah. That's a parish on the world. But the Torah, is, in, sense, in other words, the world is a book, but it might be a sealed book. It's a Sefer HaChusim. We don't understand it. We need someone to understand it. And the Torah is like, and then we say, oh, well, the, really the Torah is before the world, because understanding has to precede actuality. But the point is, we always looking, and it's not clear that there's such a step, because like the Raman would say, well, does God need the first plan and then do it all? His planning is doing it already. But for us, at least, we need to have this step. That's what we have, like, this thing with time also, like Rosh Hashanah, and then after Rosh Hashanah, and then he sends out Shlichem, with Setlech, and Hashanah, and all of that. But just the way, we, not, it's very hard to think otherwise. So because I think that this is why Ibn Ezra and others are going to look for more explicit places, or more detailed places, where we could call a book. And Ibn Ezra's shot is that it means, it means the stars. That's his pshat, because he thinks, he's an astrologer famously, and he thinks that everything that happens is written first in the stars, literally written, and some, if you know how to read them. And that's the book, God's book. Now what does it mean that Mechenenu Mesifrecha means sort of like change my stars to become worse? I'm not sure how he exactly reads that. But it definitely explicitly means that it means Amerechaz HaShemayim, the stars, which um, are what determines most of, at least most of what people happen to people. That Ezra, Ibn Ezra in general believes, unlike the Rambam, that astrology is true, but he does believe that there's the Yotzim and Aklal, which is that if you're really a, real, a true philosopher or a true Jew, you're not, you can go beyond the stars. That's, that's what we say today. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Maybe that's Moshe, like Moshe originally was before, and now he's, I'm not sure how exactly he... That's a famous Kuzri and, and the Madrash about that, yeah. But uh, the, I don't know if Ibn Ezra takes that that far, but he definitely he thinks that the Sefer, in other words, Ibn Ezra says, and he says it in Tehillim, and he says it over there, Sefer Achayim, according to Rabbi Avram Ibn Ezra, is the stars, that's God's book, that's where he writes down his plans. Of course, there's like a natural way of how this works, and he's, he's basically a Neoplatonist, believes in the, like, but that's, that's where the book is, that's, the book's in the stars, so if you want to read God's book, you've got to become an astrologer, those are the people that read God's book. And that's what Moshe was talking about, and as I've and that's also, this, by the way, this also explains us why there's times. This is also in Ibn Ezra, by the way, in somewhere. I think in, 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 when he talks about Rosh Hashanah, he says explicitly that why we talk about the dinner Rosh Hashanah, and we mentioned earlier there's a basic problem with time here, like why this time. And Ibn Ezra as well, obviously, because Tishrei uh, is Ma'azul Maznaim, and that symbolizes uh, Mishpat, and that's why. Uh, the Kizri is not astrological. The Kizri is God's will. It's different. Right. Or, or, or either God's will or a heavenly system, not the stars. Right. He does mention astrology and says maybe they just have the wrong system. He does, does say something, but yeah. Ibn Ezra is a basic astrologer and he thinks he can explain you. I actually quoted someone here that gives a whole astrological explanation for why the Shoshana has to be the Shoshana and why these three books and even tell you which stars are which book. This is, he's a real astrologer. He really thinks that. And like I said, it's barely true that it's Sadiq change it. It is true, because it seems like that would be the whole thing of doing tshuva and the whole thing, but he's, he's very, it's, it's a difficult thing for him. Anyways, that's the Ibn Ezra's pshat. Okay. Actually, the Reder Ben Abachia and the Reder say something like this too. Maybe he's thinking about like the intellects beyond the stars, but something similar. Who? The Gemara also seems to think they're out to get out of the stars. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Says that some, 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 the some, 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 the star is very good. Now, who else? How, what other chat is there? Okay, then there's, I have to quote you the Rambam. There's actually a Befez Rambam about that. There's no book. And you can read it. I'm not going to read it for you right now. Not very interesting because I'm confused about what he means. I wanted to talk about also the Rambam in Perish Mishnais and Ovis about Vachal Masach Abasef and Echtovim. And I'm not sure how it connects. But it's, uh, these are all problems. I forgot I had a chat on it, but I forgot what it is. Um, yeah, that's enough pshat them, no? There's one more thing that I have to say. It's a very important thing. You will get to, you'll figure out the Ram at some point. There's one more thing that I have to say, which is the Chsidish Pshat. 
So the Dov Be, the Magad of Mezrich, apparently taught something like this. He seemed that taught, taught a few different things, but the main thing that he taught about Shlesh Yisferim Neftach and is that these three books are, it's in page 14 and 15, I bought a bunch of sources about this. He seems to have taught something in different language, but he seems to have taught something like this, that these books, so we have this like question, where are these books? Does God have books? Is there books in heaven? And the Medrash Magad said, no, of course there's no books anywhere. I know where there's books. There's thoughts, and people have thoughts and, and words, and that those are books. Maybe even action. Maybe the three books are just Machshavah de Bemaase. Or maybe they're... He doesn't actually say what the three ones are. There's different ways of thinking what the three ones are. But his point is that books is just another way for words. Letters, words. And we are the words. So for him, words are in the soul of the person, the soul of the human. That's where there's words. He's not really sure. This is part of the of the of the or the or the or the Magid's whole switch where they at least focus mostly on things in, in human souls and not on things in, in the heavens and, and things like that. Sometimes they say that, well, the heavens just mean this. Or sometimes they say there's at least this uh, microcosm going on. Never clear what they actually think, but they definitely care about the human letters. But another way of saying this, you could, it's very damn mystic way of saying it, which is that God obviously doesn't think in words. Humans think in words. Well, God somehow acts through them, and we know him through these words. So when we think about words, we think about God's books, we're thinking about us thinking, we're not thinking about God thinking. This is something that I would agree with 100%. And then he goes on to do, it, to, to get, do something even more radical than that, say, okay, so now who's writing these books or how they're being written? So, oh, thank you very much. That when we daven on Rosh Hashanah, we have thoughts on Rosh Hashanah, we have min, minhogi and mitzvahs, that's another way of saying writing books. Or writing these thoughts, they're not it's maybe words or, or thoughts, sentences. Those are the books that get written. And then he's like, okay, so where are the bad books? He says, yeah, of course, sometimes you have a bad thought on Rosh Hashanah. So that's a Sefer Shalashan. And your job is to like <laughs> fix that one and to make it into a good thought. And so on. Things and say it's good. Hmm? Things and say it's good. Yeah, yeah, there's different ways. So there's different ways of reading this, of reading what he said. There's many different ways and they go back and ultimately to different ways in which the Zohar understood these three books. Uh, mm, or going back, this is, again, this is a way of showing everyone's entire theology. Uh, like some people, like um, the, the, the Karjan Samagad, speaking to normal people apparently, tries to make this very normal and make this into like a Musa thing. Like you should, you should have chizek, you should not have bad thoughts on Rosh Hashanah, and, and you should, uh, you should... Uh, if you think, if you, he's, he's also actually worried about uh, people having like, um, how do you call it, like obsessive bad thoughts, like maybe I'm gonna have a bad year. He says, yeah, that's like the sudden coming, and saying you should have a bad year. So say, no, I won't have a bad year. And like having this whole dialogue in your, in your mind is their interpretation of what this whole, and there's all these stories, like the Medr, the Bashantov told these stories, you know, the Degel, like I, I was in Himmel Rosh Hashanah, and the Chavayi Sutton said this, and I answered that. Where did these, these stories happen in his mind or in his imagination? And that's how he understood, the, he understood that's what it means. Because obviously there's no... That, that's the Himmel, that's, that's what it means. Of course, it means everyone will learn to do this. Because meanwhile, people are afraid that maybe in Himmel there's some Malach dealing with some Sutton, and we need to build a Shoif. And the says, no, there's a Sutton which are your... Self, well, the real New Age way to say it would be like self-judgment. But he explicitly talks about this. So just, you know, and then the Shoifer is like, no, I'm a good Jew, I'm a long Shoifer, and everything will be fine. And that's all happening in your mind. That's his chat. Or it's like saying, and by the way, yeah, yeah, it's a good, it's a good practice. Or, or like maybe having bad thoughts on other people, so not like, you know, these stories like the Tzaddik and the Ben Shalmala deciding uh, what should happen. That's what it's, that's that story. Um, or it's about, or it's about like really, like what I think what, another thing that's explicit also here is about him, his whole thing being this, that we have all these words, we have all these uh, words, both words, spoken words and thought words. And he calls it Adam Akshav and Adam Adibe. And beyond all those, this is called Bina and Malchus, not in, in, in the Magad's language. And there's this whole story of Rosh Hashanah where the words got this kind of, the point is that he thinks that, that 
words that are not uh, connected to thoughts and thoughts that are not connected to the meaning of the thoughts or to what's the essence beyond the thoughts are the source of all the problems in the world or maybe they are themselves all the problems in the world. And that's why if you're Sefshtar Hashem, it's another way of saying the Sefshtar Hashem, according to him, this, this is the vertical. Until now we had like this, this uh, horizontal image of like Tzadikim bending the Hashem. But he has a vertical image. And also in the Zohar, the Zohar has two Pshatim of, tzadik, of, of, of these three Sefer. One is Chagat, which is Chesed in Rachman, right, right, left, middle. And the other one is three, three ladders, uh, three steps. So, or Binat Feres Malchus, where, where Malchus is the, is the Rosha, the Feres is the, is the Benoni, and Binat is the Tzadik. And the Magid work was bo- mostly actually works with this one. And he thinks that, okay, so Malchus is, a, is a, just a word that has no meaning or is not connected to anything or it doesn't express life or things like that. In other words, disconnected. That's the Movas. That's really the people that barely have, can be said to have a book. Like they have like a sloy book, like this Yimuchim is a book. And that's what happens if you're a Russia. So if you're living disconnected to, to the source. And then if you're a Benni, then you're continually like somewhere in between. Like you're supposed to be, but you're not. And you're like, your foot is in this world and your head is in the other world and you're not sure. And that's a Benni. And that's said that that's, that's, that's actually a very important, the Benoni is one of the most important people because he's the only normal person. <laughs> it's very important to have Benoni in life. And like in Purim Kurnta Kabbalah, Benoni is like Chadarich Chad Kaseh Chad Benoni, says in, 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 in Pusach Aliyo, people don't say it. But get it, Pusach, the Benoni is the Teferis, or the Yisoy, the, 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 we think that it's, the Tzadik is the, the Zach, was mach, connects everything, but the Ra'as is the Benoni, that's my Chedesh today. Unlike, the Benoni is a concept. Benoni as the, as the middle, and middle is both vertically and horizontally, but now I'm thinking more horizon, uh, vertically. So the problem with Sadiqim is that they don't understand anything, and the problem with their show is that they don't understand anything. The only people that understand something are like me and you, that we understand the Sadiqim, and we understand the Risham, and we're not sure. Not only not sure, but they're both right. I mean, uh, you could be a Sadiq, I'm a Shiga, well, you're gonna go live like uh, Moshe on the mountain your whole life, Shkana Ma'al Mench. Are you gonna be a Risham and live like well, no, so you're going to do in the morning a tzaddik and the afternoon a benoni and a bemencha. Man, that's basically life. Thank you very much. And anyways, that's the sefer shel benonim. And some of their thoughts are tzaddik thoughts. Some of their thoughts are rasha thoughts. And they're like the thing of, rish, of not only rasha, but shalash sonim tochem is like really the ideal would be to connect all these three books. Like have them, them at least talk to each other. That's why rasha, you have to go to shul. Unlike a whole year, we don't have to go to shul. It says in Zohar, the fetish. I didn't make this up. It says in, not only in Zerach, it's a uh, minag Yisrael. And I should have done it for some if we go to the Shtut. Nobody goes to Shul the whole year, you go to Shul the whole year. Okay, and originally when people didn't went to work all year, they didn't go to Shul all year. But I should have one of the days, it says in, in Medrash, uh, on Yom Kippur and Hashanah, because there's some certain days in, in Hashanah, Yom Kippur, people, everyone comes to Shul. The idea. And the is, that's why, because and you could either be a tzad- if you're not coming in shul, you're either a tzaddik or a rishon gomer. That's basically the concept. Like tzaddikim, they're just doing whatever they're doing, and they're showing meaning no, disconnected people are just doing whatever they're doing. What? Not fasting and kippur. Oh, those tzaddikim. <laughs> yeah. No, the reason that tzaddikim do fast in kippur, or they come to shul for yom kippur, or for some reason some chastayr. I don't know. One day, you know, there's there's a chastayr from the from the rabbinim that you have to three you have to try to daven be 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 three days a year. Hashan rabban some chastayr. So I'm, I'm, I think it's too much. One day is enough. I want to fill up those days. I mean, all the fillers, man, seriously. But he said that with that, with that your mala, all the fillers, they have the chidus. Some chustoyer means like the missive after your shikir or something. I don't know. Point is that there's all these different kinds of people. There's Sadiq people and Rishab people and Benoni people. And you have to put them together somehow to create a universe. That's, that's what the Priya Sa'adam was. So the fact that Tzadikim do their spot this and the show their spot this and the Benim nobody cares about anyways, that's why there's not a that's the Olam Hashvirach man that's that's Tzuras. So and they all come to the same shul and they say good job to each other gdiamtiv. That's called making zayim tchiles masecha. That's a good malach of living. That's the three books and they're really not three books. That's my chiddush now. It's just three parts of one book. Where are the three parts? I mean, as long as the three books, then people die. But we have to make my bind them all together. You know, there's a lot of books called Shlajas Firm and they and they're like three little booklets. <laughs> That's the way. There should be not three books. There should be one book. Shine. That's the shine. That's the 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 shine. Kids, shine. It's enough.